Today on Garage Noise, we've got a Harley Davidson F250 that we're going to do some repairs on. So today I'm going to share with you how to repair some failing bodywork. So if you've got a vehicle that's got some old bodywork that's bubbling up, it's damaged, it needs to be repaired, I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Give you a couple different options on how you can repair that. So let's dig in and get started. So this is what we've got here. We've got this Harley Davidson F250 and it's got some bubbling Bondo here. Now this hood also has some spider cracking on the hood that I just noticed when I pulled it in under the ultraviolet lights. We've got cracking throughout this hood. So really this hood probably needs to be stripped down to bare metal. Now I'm gonna talk with the customer. I know he's selling this vehicle, so I'm not sure if he wants to go that route and spend that money. If he does not, I'll share with you the best way to repair this. The right way to do it is to strip it down to bare metal, but there are some things you can do if you have some cracking paint that may save you a little bit of time and some money. But first we're gonna address this Bondo. Let's see if we can pick some of this Bondo off here. Pops right off. Yeah, look at that rust. What do you know? Moisture has gotten under the body repair. Just a crease there. Looks like something hit it and what they did is filled it. Get out a hammer. Uh, some air tools. I'm just going to get this out. We'll grind it off with this uh, 80 grit roll lock disc, get it cleaned up. dust off and there's what we got now if you can see here around the edge of this that's a thin coat of filler so this I'm assuming this filler goes all down this section we don't know how far it goes but if you're doing this at home and you run into old body filler like this if you're doing a restoration project you may just want to remove it all if you're stripping panels you you want to remove it all if you possibly can um, especially if it's thick and they didn't pull out the metal properly. Uh, you want to get all that old filler removed. Now in this case, this is thin, kind of doing an inexpensive job for this guy because he's putting it up for sale. So he doesn't want to put a ton of money into it, which is understandable. But the peeling area was in this rusted section here. This is all has good adhesion, okay? And I can tell it has good adhesion because there's no gap in between the filler and the substrates. Now I'm going to feather edge this out smoother and make sure, but what we're going to do now is pull this out with that uh, G90E, get this just a little bit better. It's a small dent, but it's too deep to really fill. It can be filled, but I don't like filling it. It's just a little bit deep for what I want to do. I'd rather pull this out just a little bit, dolly this around a little bit, thin coat of filler, and then prep out this hood for paint. Let's get the G90E over here and pull this out. We got to ground this. Perfect, but it's a, out a little far now, but it's much better than it was. Pulled out most of that crease. There's a little bit of a crease in there, but we're gonna grind it down. We might pull it a little bit more, prep out this area with some 80 grit, and get it ready for some body filler. I'm using this extract, this Cubitron 2 extract mesh. 
sandpaper, man. And this stuff is the bomb. Do they still say that anymore? The bomb? It's awesome. I love it. It lasts forever compared to those, that inexpensive sandpaper. Okay, so let's, uh, we got the power. I'll turn this baby on. We're just gonna do this section right here. We're kind of shaping this with the old filler that they put in it and where we're gonna put some new filler. Now there's still a little ridge right around here. So we're just gonna tap that down a little bit. Yeah, right here. And I'm doing that with the palm of my hand. I'm feeling over this. You can actually get a good feel for it. You close your eyes and you can get a good feel for if the metal's high, if you got any waves in it or high spots. And I can, I can feel the high spot. It's okay if it's a little bit low. You want it to be a little bit low so when you add your filler, your filler can do its job and flatten it out. It's when it's high that's gonna cause a problem. That's why a lot of guys will just, they call it cave and pave. They'll smash everything down and then fill it because then they, they know they won't run into any high areas and it's not gonna cause them any problems when they go to fill it or block it. Okay, now we're good. Okay, I'm just gonna cough a piece of 80 here. So we're just gonna sand in these grooves to get this all sanded so we have a good adhesion. There is just a tiny little hole in here. I'm not gonna weld it up because I'm, I don't want it to blow out. And for what this guy wants to do, this was gonna be perfect. Now, I'm gonna make my own little spreader. I'm gonna get the size I need. I run, run a razor blade down it. So one of these two is gonna be perfect. We're gonna use this U-Pull uh, Lightweight Gold. Say it doesn't separate in the can, and no it doesn't. I like this stuff, I just started using it. That's about all we'll need right there. We shouldn't need much more than that, so let's just put a coat of that on. We'll see if that's gonna be enough. Knead up your uh, hardener. Gotta knead it up. Let's see. Oh yeah, that looks good. We're just gonna go from the center to the edge. Bam. Now you wanna fold this in. You don't wanna stir it. You're gonna introduce air to it. And you don't wanna introduce air to this body filler because that's gonna cause pinholes. And so when you block sand it through, when you block sand it to get it straight, you'll get little air pockets in there. Those are called pinholes and you'll have to fill those and do some more work to get rid of those. Try to eliminate pinholes if possible. So you wanna fold this in till it's all one uniform color. Press it out on your palette so it's flat. That'll give you more working time. It'll also help press out any air pockets that you might have. That you Got a little bit on our spreader here. So I Okay, so I've got some of this Cubitron 80 grit on a medium long board. It's not super long, but we'll put some guide coat on here just to give us an idea, show you guys the high and low areas. Now, as we're blocking this, we're gonna block in an X pattern. We're gonna go in different directions. We don't wanna go in one direction. We're gonna cover as much, now I'm not, we're gonna cover as much surface area as possible. Now, I don't wanna press really hard on this. I wanna apply even pressure on my block. So I wanna sand with the entire surface of this block as I block over this.
Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of this 220 on this round block, and we're gonna block in this contour of this body line and up and over this. Um, this is gonna remove these 80 grit scratches. It's gonna help us get this contour in here shaped like we want it. Okay, so the only problem we have here is right here. Where we're transitioning from the body filler to the old body work. There's a little wave there. I'm gonna put a thin coat of icing over this. This is a polyester glazing putty, just to kind of smooth it out. Uh, take out that little wave. It's a very thin coat and it blocks very easy. So we'll do that. And this thing will be ready to prep out for primer. Now, first I think I'm gonna go around the edge of this with some 320 clean up some of these coarser scratches, these 80 grit scratches, um, smooth those out before we lay our glazing putty. Wash it real quick before we do this. This is isopropyl alcohol. All right, this is what we're using. Icing, polyester finishing putty. Really, that's it right there. That's it. All right, we're just gonna go from the top to the bottom here. Put a little 180 on this. Again, Cubitron, Cubitron 2. This stuff is good. See, it has different sheets, so you can rip off smaller sheets. It's got these perforated lines here. You can just do little squares, two squares. See that low area right here where the guide coat is? We need to block that out. Since I got rid of my uh, mixing bank, I just mix up my primer like this. I put my drill. Quick mix and it's ready to go. Using the Spray IQ. Now this primer, we're using the U-Pole 2253. This primer mixes up four to one. So what we'll do is we go to our four to one mixing ratio. We have a four to one to one mixing ratio right here. We're gonna use the four and we're gonna use the one. We'll put the amount of primer that we want. We're gonna put, go up to the one with primer. Then we'll go over to the one column and we'll go to the one with activator. This is mixes up four to one, four parts primer, one part activator. If you wanna use it as a sealer, you do two parts of reducer, so it's four to one to two. If you wanna use it as a, as a primer surfacer, a thinner primer, you go four to one to one. But we're gonna use it as a regular primer. We might put a little bit of reducer in it to thin it out because the bodywork is straight, so we really just need a primer surfacer. So let's go ahead and mix our primer. I always pop the top on these first in case there's any crusties on there. And then we'll go to the one. I don't put that through a strainer. 
because it's so thick, it takes forever to strain. This has a micron filter in it though. So the one part, we went to the four column, we filled it up to the one. That's our primer. Now we're gonna use our activator. Now the thing about these U-Pull system is you use the same activator for your primer and your clear coat. So if you use U-Pull clear coat, you run out of hardener or activator, you can use it, uh, your primer activator and your clear coat because it's the same, same hardener. We went to the one column and we filled it up to that one with the hardener. That's a four to one mixing ratio right there. Now we're gonna put a little bit of urethane in here. Urethane reducer, I mean. We're gonna put one part urethane reducer. Maybe a little less. Yeah, there we go. So we went to the third one with our reducer. And you can see them, they're still kind of separated there. We'll use our R500 to spray this. I'm just gonna use a 1.3 tip. So we're gonna snap on the lid. Always pick it up, make sure it's all sealed. We'll lock in the collar. Yeah, we'll just put one back there. So I'm setting this air pressure at about 15 PSI with the trigger pulled. A little bit. We got a little reaction. So this is the reaction. I don't know what they painted this hood with, but if you see that line, right in there, the little halo. That's a reaction of the primer to the old paint. So we're gonna let this flash off pretty much dry. We might have to sand that out a little bit and then put another light coat on. So from here on out, I'm gonna put a lighter coat on to build that up. See how much air pressure I'm putting on here? I don't need a lot of air pressure to spray this. Doesn't create a lot of overspray. We'll let that flash off, probably put one more coat on, just because we had that little area that was reacting there. I wanna make sure that's covered. We don't have any problems with that when we sand it. So we need enough material on this repair to sand it out smooth so we can prep the rest of this out and paint it and not have to uh, primer it once again. This hood is now ready to be sanded and prepared for paint, but we've got one more thing. We've got some cracks in this hood. Now, I've talked to the customer and he opted not to repair the cracks. He wants me to do the best job I can without stripping down this hood. Let me show you what we got. If you look closely in this light, you're gonna see some micro checking. Now, I believe some of these have been painted over and cleared over. What I'm gonna to attempt to do is we're gonna sand and prep this entire hood with 600 grit sandpaper, and then we're gonna apply two coats of clear over those cracks. Like I said, the best option for this is to strip this hood down to bare metal. But if you have this situation, you have some micro checks in your paint job, and you don't wanna strip it down, there are some things you can do. One of the things you can do is to sand it all down with 600 or 320, and then put two coats of 2K urethane primer over it. That primer is gonna harden over the old surface. That's gonna help to cover those cracks. If you're just wanting to get by, get your hood refinished, make it look better. You don't wanna take the time to strip it. It's gonna provide you with a better base to apply your base coat and your clear coat to. But for this hood, we're gonna sand it down with 600. We're gonna prep out the primer for paint, and then we're gonna blend the color and clear the entire hood. These cracks are probably gonna show up in our clear coat and we may have to cut and polish this hood in order to get those out. That's one other thing. You can 
cut and polish it and get those cracks out. Now down the road, they may show up again because as the sun beats on this hood and shrinks these materials, you may be able to see those cracks again. Just keep that in mind when you're repairing your hood. The next step in this process is to prepare the primer for paint and paint this hood. If you want to see that video, click on it now. I appreciate each and every one of you watching and we'll see you next time on Garage Noise.